Hello, welcome to this CMT Markets trading update with myself, Jasper Lawler. Now, I'm recording this video on Thursday. You'll probably be viewing around Sunday or Monday, so I'm going to miss a day or so's worth of price action. But um, specifically recording it today because we've just had the, the ECB meeting. We've not seen any extra action uh, from the ECB, so both the, the Bank of England and the European Central Bank not doing anything on monetary policy. Uh, and this week ahead that we're looking at, we've obviously got the meetings from both the Federal Reserve and the Bank of Japan. And uh, really, I think a couple of factors driving the record highs that we're seeing in the Dow Jones Industrial Average at the moment, uh, the US 30 as we trade it and as I've got on the screen here, is that earnings are coming in ahead of expectations in the US. Uh, but also there's an expectation that central banks are going to ease policy further or maybe in the case of the Fed just keep loose, poli uh, loose policy going for, for longer. And so central to that will be what these, these banks update us with it this week. Uh, before we get to dig into the details, I do want to do just a, bit, could have, uh, a, a quick bit of technical analysis on the US 30 and, and then the dollar yen. The US 30 chart um, as, as I'm sure we're all familiar, we've basically seen a, break, a breakout into record territory here. And so I've just drawn a, um, a zone highlighting the record high, which we're now above, uh, and also just that pre-Brexit high, which we're obviously clearly above as well. At some point, there's got to be a pullback here. We've, according to the cash markets, had nine straight days of gains on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So obviously, some sort of pullback in order. This zone would be support area number one for me. If there is some sort of pullback, I would be expecting a bounce. Now, the reason I suspect that this trend still has some more room to go is if you look at this RSI, we haven't got into the, the overbought territory yet. Now, we're, tr we're into a trend. We're breaking out to new highs. Uh, but the RSI is still below the 70 mark that's considered overbought. I mean, if you just reference this previous rally, from the lows, it took three downward peaks of bearish divergence before the trend eventually rolled over into a trading range. Now we've broken out of that trading range and we're pushing into new highs now and it seems like pullbacks could be narrow um, but fundamentally behind that again we've got these central banks to look forward to. I think specifically maybe more even importantly the, than the Fed just specifically this month is that we've got the Bank of Japan, the re-election of Prime Minister Abe has re-amped re up calls for um, monetary stimulus. Fiscal stimulus we know is in line. Uh, there's this talk of a 20, uh, 20 trillion yen stimulus package of um, basically infrastructure spending and so the thought is that alongside that the Bank of Japan are perhaps going to expand their quantitative easing program. Um, Cutting interest rates further into negative territory I don't think would be seen too well in markets, but somehow purchasing some sort of extra assets or um, increasing the, the total number of purchases that they target in each given year I think would be seen well by markets and would be a reason to believe that the, the yen is going to fall in value and uh, could see a jump in dollar yen. Now on this dollar yen chart we've got something akin to a double bottom at the 100 level. So we're, we're well positioned here to put in a pretty significant low at this round number. We've run into a series of resistances, uh, one from this declining trend line, which is seeing a bit of a pullback for today, but also the 107 level, this previous peak, uh, again from pre-Brexit on the 23rd of June, and the 50-day moving average. So a few areas to suggest that there could be a pullback from here, and we'd drift back into to range trading conditions. The fundamental driver there uh, would be for a weaker dollar we'd have to see that the Bank of Japan uh, weaker dollar obviously means a stronger yen uh, we'd have to see the Bank of Japan fail to deliver anything so if the Bank of Japan fails to deliver uh, dollar yen dropping back into its trading range perhaps eventually taking out that 100 mark but if it does come up with some new measures uh, increasing quantitative easing specifically we could see a, a breakout into a new uptrend in, in dollar yen and I think that would also support the rise in the US 30 because not only will we have that earnings who, which at the moment are, are beating expectations we'll have central banks backstopping that, that rise as well. Um, the Fed could put a bit of spanner in those works um, but I think still uh, it seems unlikely that um, a fairly cautious Fed in general is going to make any kind of heavy hints 
that any kind of rate hike is going to come uh, before the September meeting. Some suspicion that it could actually happen in July, I think not. I think September is probably unlikely too. Um, but obviously that's something to, to watch out for. Um, the, the data in the US has been improving a bit. Uh, we just need to see the Fed language change to match that data. So that's about it. We've obviously, it's a, it's, a, it's a big week of earnings again, but also central banks very much in focus. Um, we'll be looking out to see if this US 30 can sustain its, its breakout into record territory and whether dollar yen can um, again drop and take out 100 or if that 100 level does in fact hold. Thanks very much. Good luck with trading this week. It's Jasper signing out.